live here. With Bayut. Find your next home. Browse from over 200,000 listings for rent and sale in the UAE. Download the app or visit bayut.com. Yes, indeed. Time for us to take a regular look at all things real estate and all things property. And who better to do it with than Dubizel and Bayut? Their director of sales is Fibber Ahmed, who's been kind enough to join us live in studio this morning. Fibber, always good to see you. Well, good morning to you. Good morning to you and welcome back. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, yes, let's talk. Well, I, I, a little sort of heads up because uh, I haven't been monitoring the property market over the course of the last three weeks whilst away on holiday. So I have had my uh, wrist slapped this morning uh, <laughs> by my colleagues, but they do assure me that things are still good at the moment. I think uh, that trajectory that we've been on since the beginning of the year continues uh, in an upward trend. Um, one thing we've talked a lot about is supply and demand in the market at the moment, and that is dwindling at present, just because you can't build them quick enough at the moment. So that's prompted a lot of analysts to say, well, is that therefore encouraging markets in other Emirates, outside of Dubai, outside of Abu Dhabi? A lot of people look into the Northern Emirates. I know you've been crunching the numbers with the team as well. What 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 is the overall market look like in the Northern Emirates at the moment? Yeah, we've uh, spoken a lot about the Dubai market and how active it has been. Um, as we call it, that demand is on the rise and supply is, of course, going to take its time to come to the market and meet the demand pace. So prices are astronomically high and almost reaching the 2014 um, level in Dubai. That has certainly prompted developers and end users to start looking outwards. Um, people who cannot compromise in space, who cannot compromise on certain elements, who want brand new property, have started looking at our neighboring Emirates, um, Sharjah, especially with its um, recent change in the ownership laws that were announced towards the later half of last year, has really uh, picked up momentum. When we talk to our partners, when I talk to end users, um, they're actively looking at certain areas in um, Sharjah and certain developments that were never talked about before. People always used to talk about Dubai and outskirts of Dubai, but it's interesting to see that Northern Emirates, especially Sharjah, Ras Al Khaimah, are really um, intriguing the end users and the investors alike. What about the other Emirates uh, in the, towards heading north, uh, the likes of uh, uh, Umar Quain or Ajman? Ajman has uh, been, interestingly, one of the first Emirates that um, introduced the freehold ownership laws um, back in 2004 that prompted people to start investing. Um, Ajman has been kind of relatively steady in this uh, year so far in terms of prices, in terms of activity. However, the areas that are really red hot at the moment are the offland segment in Sharjah and all the ready and upcoming projects in the Ras Al Khaimah area. There's been a lot of talk about how these Emirates are going to uh, be the next um, hot projects and hot points to watch out for. So in terms of return on investment for investors um how do how does that how does the roi stack up in the northern emirates compared to say the dubai market very competitive and it can be attributed um, definitely to the um, lower entry point in the market um in ajman downtown for example which has always been top of searches um throughout the last uh, many years that we've looked at it, um, has been very, very hot with regards to ROI. Uh, you can easily make up to 9% if you buy an apartment in Ajman downtown. Um, when you look at areas in Ras Al Khaimah, there are certain areas that are um, competing with the likes of Dubai in when it comes to ROI, averaging you about 7 to 9%, and um, continue to do so uh, because of uh, they're newly built, um, they're in demand, and of course the entry point is low. So um, healthy competition for Dubai when it comes to ROI, especially for the international investors. I'll tell you one thing I see whenever we talk about the Northern Emirates, there's, there's, there's no shortage of residential developments uh, that are springing up and, and we get n n news of that. Is it the same when it comes to sort of commercial developments as well? 
I would say that there are certain emirates that are heavily still focused on commercial um, activity. Ajman is one. So um, when I was looking at the numbers last evening for these, uh, commercial activity in Ajman real estate makes up a decent chunk as compared to residential activity. So for the likes of um, Sharjah and Ras al Khaimah, yes, uh, residential still takes the lead and there are more activity and more projects that you see in these areas. But certainly there is room for more um, uh, commercial um, um, activity to pop up. Ras al Khaimah is looking to add um, um, new hotels to its um, offerings as well as retail space. Uh, Sharjah, I believe, is uh, pretty focused on residential for the next um, couple of years. So you would see a mix. You would have to kind of spread out of Sharjah, maybe go towards Ras al Khaimah and Ajman if you're looking to do a commercial investment. It's interesting, isn't it? Because uh, we often look at where the money is coming from when it comes to investment. Um, look, no, no secret that a lot of uh, international foreign investment coming into uh, the Dubai and the Abu Dhabi markets at the moment from foreign investors. It, is it the same when it comes to the Northern Emirates or are we seeing Dubai residents looking for more accessible um, inward points and therefore moving to the Northern Emirates? There's, there's been a very interesting uh, shift um, in Sharjah market in particular, if we talk about it. Um, I was reading a report by a very well-known developer. Um, it said that Prior to the announcement and of last year about the ownership uh, changes, 90% of their um, transactions were with the Arabs and the Emiratis. Whereas now when they look at the split, it's a healthy 50-50 split between expats and um, Emiratis and Arab nationals. Of course, in um, Sharjah, you would see people from a wider GCC region investing more and more. Um, also people from India, Pakistan are looking to invest. Whereas when you look at Ras al Khaimah, it's a very interesting mix. Mm. You have your Russians buying there. They've always loved waterfront living um, and a bit of peace and quiet. Um, then you have your Germans, your Chinese, and of course your regular um, local and Emiratis buying in that region. So, uh, well, the phrase you just used there, and again, again, we, we talk about the squeeze on waterfront living, especially in a place like Dubai and the Dubai market, but then you forget there's a huge coastline, isn't there? To Absolutely. Be taken Absolutely. I think very interesting projects coming up. Uh, Marjan Island, um, of course, with the, all the upcoming exciting projects that has been announced there has been um, a top of uh, talks for everybody. Um, in Ajman as well, you have the Alzora development, which is around uh, this um, natural lagoon, which looks pretty, pretty good. Um, and then uh, you have um, um, in Sharjah as well, a couple of um, Al Khan area projects that are coming near the lagoon area. They're, they're, they're there. And of course, there is a lot to be built around those um, coastal lines. Fibra, it's always good to catch up with you. Can't thank you enough for coming on into the studio this morning. Fibra is the Director of Sales at Debizel and Bayou. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you.